Hey guys, how are we doing today? Welcome to another video at Movement Mechanics. Today we are going to understand topic which is myofibrillar hypertrophy and sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. We are going to understand topics such as what is myofibrillar hypertrophy and what is sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, what are the benefits, any cons or any issues between both of these different types of hypertrophy, who should be doing which kind of hypertrophy and etc. So let's dive deep inside this topic and understand some movement mechanics. Okay guys, so before we start, I want to ask you a question. What sort of uh, sports are there out in the world? So there are various types of sports, right? We have got football, we have got rugby, we have got American football, Australian football, we have got cricket, volleyball. Then we have got certain sports which are extremely powerful and force production where we require lots of strength such as powerlifting, bodybuilding, shot put, uh, then you have got hammer throws etc. So all these powerful sports or some uh, bulky sports will require lots of strength, lots of bulkiness on your body and all the other field sports such as football, cricket, hockey etc. require lean muscular physique. Yeah, they also require muscles. They also require certain sort of hypertrophy but it requires lean hypertrophy. So now in the context of both myofibrillar hypertrophy and sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, we have to bifurcate these two hypertrophies based on sports. We have to bifurcate the sports as well when we are talking about hypertrophic changes in the body. Alright, so if you are talking about field sports or if you are talking about uh, sports which require lean physique, what type of hypertrophy is necessary? It's the myofibrillar hypertrophy, it is necessary. And when we are talking about bulky sports like powerlifting or bodybuilding or short put or hammer throw where you require lots of muscle mass, lots of voluminous muscle onto your body, at that time we would be talking about sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. But what is this sarcoplasmic hypertrophy or myofibrillar hypertrophy? So there are muscle cells in our body, right? So our muscles have got small, small amount of muscle fibers or muscle cells. So inside those fibers, there are a couple of filaments, which are known, which are known as myofilaments, which is myosin and actin filaments, A-C-T-I-N and M-Y-O-S-I-N, myosin and actin filaments. So, when we talk about myofibrillar hypertrophy, we are talking about increment in numbers and density or the size of these two filaments, which is myosin and actin. These two are protein filaments which are responsible for contractibility of the muscle. The contractions in the muscle happen because of these two filaments. So, when we talk about myofibrillar hypertrophy, we are talking about increment in density, size and numbers of these two filaments which is myosin and actin there are other filaments as well protein rich filaments we are uh, that that aren't considered during myofibrillar hypertrophy we are only talking about these two major filaments which are responsible for uh, force production and contractibility of the muscle and uh, which are directly related to myofibrillar hypertrophy okay guys so before we begin understanding the two differences of, uh, of myofibrillar hypertrophy and sarcoplasmic hypertrophy we first need to understand what is hypertrophy Hypertrophy in simple is increment in the volume, size, number of muscle fibers or the fluids or whatever contractible proteins are involved in the muscles. Okay, so when we have got increment in size, density and numbers of contractible proteins or the fluids in the body that is called as hypertrophy. So there are two types of hypertrophy. One is myofibrillar and one is sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. Now what's the difference? In terms of visibility directly with the naked eye, there are, it's, it's quite evident that sarcoplasmic hypertrophy is all about volume bulkiness. So all those bodybuilders, uh, powerlifters, shot putters, hammer throwers, etc. So all these guys undergo sarcoplasmic hypertrophy where they have got bulkiness, bulk muscles, huge amount of muscles uh, which are extremely visible to our naked eye. On the other hand, myofibrillar hypertrophy is much more prevalent in field sports, sports such as hockey, football, cricket, where you don't need bulkiness in your body, you need lean muscle mass, which is LBM, lean muscle mass. Of course, you have got growth and uh, increment in the size and density of the muscle fibers uh, involved, but those muscle fibers don't result in bulkiness or enhancement or expansion of your muscles directly. That is a scene or uh, that is seen in where sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. All right. So, what are the, these are the naked eye 
differences which we see in myofibrillar and sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. So what are the differences in terms of physiological differences? All right. So we saw the differences which can be seen by our naked eye. But what are the physiological differences when we talk about uh, these two hypertrophies? What happens? What exactly happens in your body? Now, for that context, we'll start off with myofibrillar hypertrophy. Now, do in the muscle, there are muscle cells or muscle fibers. Inside those muscle fibers, there are a couple of protein filaments, which is known as myofilaments, which contains myosin and actin. When there is an increment in these two filaments, in, in increment in their size, numbers, density, we undergo myofibrillar hypertrophy. On the other hand, sarcoplasm, which is the cytoplasm, the life of a muscle, that is where your fluid hypertrophy or sarcoplasmic hypertrophy happens. So sarcoplasmic hypertrophy is increment in the fluid of the sarcoplasm. It is commonly termed as fluid hypertrophy as well. So sarcoplasmic hypertrophy is basically increment in the fluid and other uh, uh, filaments in the muscle and myofibrillar hypertrophy is increment in the size and density of the myofibrils, myosin and actin. Okay, so now we understood what are the differences, but how do we actually see those differences? In the sense, how do we train for those differences? How do we prevent getting into the sarcoplasmic hypertrophy zone or getting into the myofibrillar hypertrophy zone. So what are the methods to do that? Firstly, we need to understand the energy systems involved during different hypertrophies. When we're talking about the sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, it is the glycolytic system which is dominant. On the other hand, for your myofibrillar hypertrophy, it is the phosphogen system which is dominant. So first difference is the energy system dominance. Okay. The second difference is set reputations and percentile of 1RM lifted differences. Okay, so for uh, sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, you can go a bit high on volume. Okay, so you can have added reps, 8 reps, 10 reps, 12 reps, 11 reps, something like that. You can go till 15 reps with heavy weights. Okay, so the percentile of 1RM or the weight lifted may remain the same, but the volume, the set and the rep scheme uh, may ch uh, changes during myofibrillar and uh, the sarcoplasmic hypertrophy as well. Uh, when we talk about myofibrillar hypertrophy, the set and rep schemes come closer towards your percentile of uh, highest percentile of uh, your RM, which is your closer to your one RM. So six reps, seven reps, eight reps. So at that time we are triggering the myofibrillar hypertrophic zone. Okay, so these are the energy systems and the sets and the rep schemes which we just discussed. But then there is a variation in the program, how you implement the program. That is how uh, you can actually see a difference in the energy systems utilization and the sets and the rep schemes as well. So right now I'm displaying a program and showing some certain arrows of the uh, program which I use for a myofibrillar hypertrophy program as well as a sarcoplasmic hypertrophy program. So if you see on the myofibrillar hypertrophy part, so the program doesn't go sideways, it goes vertical. So it goes from uh, squats to deadlift to bench press to lunges. So when you are going in a vertical way and not in a horizontal way, at that time myofibrillar hypertrophy is triggered. But for that, you need to lift heavy weights. You need to be close to your one RM. So at that time, strength comes into the picture. Okay, hypertrophy, but that is more into the strength oriented hypertrophy. So anything close to your 93% of one RM can be utilized. Still 93% of your one RM can be utilized during myofibrillar hypertrophy. And the a sequence of uh, doing the exercise has to be vertical. You cannot do squat, squat, squat or deadlift, deadlift, deadlift. You have to go in a sequence which is vertical. So squat, deadlift, uh, bench press, uh, cable pulley, etc. So in this manner, when you are going in a vertical manner, what is happening? So before you come back to squat, your quadriceps or the muscles involved in during a squat have rested uh, enough. So the phosphogens in those muscles are replenished. So that is what happening. But on the other hand, if you are going squat, 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 what is happening? You're going into the glycolytic zone. And as we discussed that during myofibrillar hypertrophy, we want to stay in the phosphogen system rather than going into the glycolytic system. If you want to do sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, it's very simple. You just flip what we were doing. So rather than going vertical, go sideways. Do squat, squat, squat. Do deadlift, deadlift, deadlift. Do a bench press, bench press, bench press. Squat, one minute rest. Squat, one minute rest. Squat. All right. So this is going to 
lead you to a sarcoplasmic hypertrophy whereas cot one minute rest deadlift one minute rest bench press one minute rest is going to lead you to a myofibrillar hypertrophy all right so when we talk about hypertrophy we often say that it's all about muscle mass it's all about volume it's all about size of the body huge muscles huge quadriceps huge biceps it's not about that for athletes it's never about volume of the muscles okay it's never about that it's all about being lean being muscular but lean being lean it's not about huge muscles and because that 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 leads to loss of mobility that leads to excess expenditure energy expenditure that leads to uh, quick fatigue that leads to loss of agility uh, quickness etc so athletes don't want this bodybuilders power lifters need that loss of everything okay need that loss of athleticism in terms of field sports athleticism because bodybuilders or say power lifters are also kind of athletes right but they are different breed of athletes altogether they need that excess volume hence they train in that particular zone so this particular question answers why a particular uh, sports person a field sport person should train the myofibrillar aspect of hypertrophy and why a power lifter or a, a bodybuilder should train onto the sarcoplasmic side of hypertrophy now there is another trick when we talk about myofibrillar as well as sarcoplasmic hypertrophy which is olympic weightlifters now olympic weightlifters fall in both of the categories for me they fall in both of the categories i cannot differentiate an olympic weightlifter in myofibrillar or sarcoplasmic category however if i want to differentiate them then i need to differentiate them based on their what weight category so people or athletes with lower weight category for me would fall into what myofibrillar category myofibrillar hypertrophy category but on the other hand athletes who have got high who compete in high weight excess weight say 80 kgs 90 kgs 100 kgs for them i feel that sarcoplasmic hypertrophy is much more efficient for uh, lifting that excess weight of their body okay if if they are going to lift 100 kgs on the barbell at the same time they are also lifting 80 kgs of their own body so that is 180 all together hence they need that extra amount of muscle mass to lift that extra weight hence they can be qualified into sarcoplasmic hypertrophy and uh, uh, lower weight category athletes or weightlifters can be classified into the myofibrillar category but for me i cannot really differentiate uh, directly all right guys so the template the program design template for myofibrillar and sarcoplasmic hypertrophy has been added by me in the description below so you can check out that template as well uh, if you have got any questions regarding that template comment below uh, if you are if you are loving my content make sure you are liking the videos uh, subscribing to my youtube channel and hitting that bell icon so that you get the notification whenever i am uploading a new video also guys if you have got any questions or doubts related to today's video make sure you are dropping them in the comment section below so that i can answer all of the doubts and questions okay guys thank you for watching the video till the very end this is mihir signing off see you later bye bye